Hello, everyone. My name is Aaron Petrus, and I am the Executive Vice President of Global Operations for WE Communications. WE Communications is a global, integrated communications agency. We build brand awareness for technology and healthcare clients around the world by developing the stories that help brands share their purpose with their audience and their key stakeholders. Today's session is about the intersection of infrastructure, innovation, and connectivity and the evolving role of data centers. We'll talk about the expectations and the landscape across Southeast Asia and India, trends and penetration of data centers in emerging and developed markets, perspectives on data center innovation and the commercial opportunity, how digitalization creates economic prosperity, and data centers as utilities, as well as the increasing responsibility towards sustainability reflecting edge use cases. We know from our own research at WE Communications that customers are demanding more transparency, more accountability, and more commitment from businesses to deliver high quality information-led experiences while also acting with integrity. In fact, in our Brands in Motion study titled The Bravery Mandate, 71% of consumers believe that brands have an obligation to factor in societal and global issues relative to their products and operating procedures. We'll discuss these topics and many more as data centers pivot from single thread admissions of delivering data and information enabled experiences with a brave new mandate of innovation in a changing world. We have an excellent set of panelists from across the West Coast of the United States, as well as leaders from India and Singapore each of which bringing a unique perspective that we'll pull together for you over the next 60 minutes. We'll glean perspective from data center hosting and construction, the partner and technology innovation side, shared services, as well as from a public policy perspective. As we start our discussion, let's go around the virtual room and get an introduction from our panelists. Shushant, I'll start with you. Thank you so much for having me here on the panel. Hi, everyone. I'm Sushant Rabra. I'm a partner with KPMG in India, where I focus on digital transformation. Uh, the last 17 years, I have worked with clients in mid-market as well as large corporates on their digital transformation journey. In addition to that, I have been fortunate to work with some of the leading flagship programs of uh, Government of India from a digitization perspective. And if I talk about digitization and data center, that's a very exciting space to be right now in India. And that to be here on this panel to share my thoughts on that. Thank you, Shushant. Raj, over to you. Uh, thanks, Aaron. And uh, really, I'm very happy to join the panel. Uh, I'm Raj Javatkar, uh, Chief Technology Officer for Juniper Networks. Uh, and at Juniper, one of my biggest uh, initiatives is to help our customers modernize their data centers. We run one of the largest data centers in uh, India, for example, and also we have been working in multiple sectors of business there, banking, um, government, as well as uh, uh, the telecom sector. And I really think that India is at the cusp of uh, innovation in this space by increasing uh, its uh, uh, investments with Make in India initiative and other initiatives. So looking forward to contributing to the discussion today. Thank you. Thank you, Raj. Look forward to having you on the panel and your insights. Chris? Hi, everyone. Hi, my name is Chris Martin. I am a principal at Access Partnership. We are a global policy and regulatory consulting firm for the technology sector and, and more broadly for technology issues worldwide. As it relates to the topics today, our clients range from hardware manufacturers to cloud services firms to uh, other innovators in, in the infrastructure connectivity space, as well as governments directly who uh, are, are increasingly interested in, uh, in, in this arena as uh, the world digitalizes more and more. So it's really a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Chris. Great to have you. Dave. Yeah, hi, thanks for having me. I'm Dave Renard, I'm with Equinix. Been here about 12 years on the global design and construction team. I head up uh, energy and renewable energy procurement as well as uh, sustainability activities in, uh, for the global design and construction 
space uh, for Equinix. And uh, Southeast Asia is a really interesting area for us right now and excited to bring what we do uh, into India. Excellent. Sustainability will be a big topic of today's discussion. So thank you, Dave. And then last but not least, Sanjay. Thanks, Sharon. Great to be part of such an exciting uh, journey and uh, discussion today. I'm Sanjay Bhutani. I'm Senior Vice President of Adani, Adani Connects. And I've been part of this group from last two and a half years. And last 28 years, I've been an exciting journey in India on a data center side. And as we know, data center is something which is going big way in India and sustainability is core of it. And uh, we from Adani Group are contributing a lot in sustainability and policy advocacy is also something which is key to key to this uh, initiative. Yes, we are very, very excited to be part of this uh, session. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Sanjay. And thank you, everyone in advance. Uh, we're looking forward to the discussion. So let's get into it. Uh, we're going to start with Chris. Uh, Chris, so we know Singapore as a hub for data centers and the increase in the number of facilities in Singapore has also created concern from government ministers, which mirrors what's happening in many markets around the world. For those not familiar with that particular situation, can you provide an overview of what's happening in Singapore, but also how similar situations may develop in India as the data center market there grows? Sure, Aaron. So Singapore has really pioneered a lot of the, the, the development of data centers in Southeast Asia as it, um, uh, as it did with the financial services industry and really became a hub for, for that uh, sector here in, in this part of the world. It's, it's done the same in the data arena. And uh, obviously data centers will play a central core as a part of that economic uh, journey for the country. So it was in some, uh, in some ways uh, an interesting and, and somewhat unexpected move that uh, Singapore uh, pushed through a data center moratorium on any new construction of data centers back in 2019. So up to then it had had about 60 data centers uh, in operation and, and it, it still remains an attractive center for those here. Uh, I think a lot of the incentives, uh, despite the moratorium remain it, strong subsea cable network, low risk of natural disasters, the, the policy and regulatory environment here in Singapore are conducive to, to data moving in and out uh, relatively unencumbered, uh, which is it's not the case everywhere. So uh, you're right, though, that the, the moratorium went into effect because there were some unique concerns the government had. And and to be fair to, to Singapore, it, it's not the only place that has implemented a moratorium on data center. So we've seen that in other European markets and, and other parts of the world. But the, the, the things really driving this are, are, are a few. First, Data centers are energy heavy consumers. Here in Singapore, they eat up about 7% of the generating capacity. So that's a, that's a pretty hefty amount. And um, I guess, you know, as this relates to India, um, this would, would obviously be an issue uh, given the, the need for continuous energy supply to, to any type of, of infrastructure like this and just the draw on, on energy supply. So. Uh, that is, I, I think, a relevant issue uh, on, the, on the subcontinent. I'd say second, connected to the energy use, is that uh, this naturally um, encompasses sustainability concerns. So that's, a, that's an issue for every country, including India. Uh, estimates suggest that data centers account for about 5% of global greenhouse emissions. And uh, therefore, there's a real push to shift data centers to renewable sources of electricity. Uh, maybe Dave can, can correct me. I, I heard somewhere Equinix's newest data center in Singapore are operating on 100% renewables. And, and I know that there's been a push by other industry actors to um, really move towards environmentally friendly options. Uh, Facebook, Amazon have announced the use of those uh, for, for their data centers. And, uh, and this is, is something that the government here in Singapore is really keen to balance the business needs with environmental sustainability. Uh, the Singa Singapore has a green plan in place for 2030. And, and just to give you guys an indication, 
all government data centers will have to achieve a, a green mark platinum standard by, by 2025, which is a, a range of, of sustainability standards. So sustainability requires investment and that presents a major challenge for India uh, at the moment. Uh, last two are, are data centers require physical space. Singapore's land constraints, so space for industrial infrastructure is limited and, and needs careful management. I think this is, is actually less of an issue in India. And then uh, lastly, data centers don't generate a lot of direct employment. So while I, I believe this is an issue for India and, and really any other economy, the, the, this last point really begs the question around how vital can data centers be for economic growth beyond their direct employment capacity. Uh, here uh, and in and, and most places, data centers are also vital to the rapidly scaling uh, digitalization, as I mentioned at the outset that we're seeing. Uh, just take the, the, the cloud industry, for example, uh, and that's only grown over the, the current wave of digitalization during a pandemic. That's driving many industries to, to take up new services that are, um, that are delivered over networks. This requires data to move and, and that data needs a place to, to, to stay. So um, data centers are, are really uh, important for all sorts of vertical industries, be it the financial services sector, healthcare, um, industrial data, uh, all of that um, relies on the ability for, for data to, to move and to, to be housed somewhere. So uh, there are all these antecedent economic benefits that I think need to be considered. So that's a real question right now uh, here in Singapore. And I imagine that will be a question in India as well. That's a great perspective, Chris, thank you. And I know that we will cover a variety of those topics from sustainability to commercial and economic opportunity uh, in, in the questions ahead. So that's an excellent perspective to really get us oriented in the rest of our time today. We we're lucky to have data center operators with us on this panel today. And as you mentioned, Equinix, Equinix recently made an important announcement of an R&D center of excellence in Bengaluru. So Dave, I'm, I'm hoping you can ground everyone in what is a data center? I think many people have a perception that it's a room in a basement. Uh, and as Chris has alluded to, it's definitely not those things. Uh, but what do data centers look like today? And why is an announcement like what we saw from Equinix last week uh, uh, important from a technology and an economic perspective? Yeah, I mean, data centers certainly can be a room in a basement, and they a lot of a lot of people think back to the telecom days, um, where they used to be shoved in in basements and and uh, ancillary spaces all over buildings, high rise buildings in downtown centers. Today, um, data centers are are quite high tech. They have lots of security, um, you know, uh, and, and infrastructure to support. Um, the services that are necessary to operate the world we live in. And again, like Chris mentioned it, it's, 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 it's financial markets, it's business to business, it's retail operations, it's Cyber Monday, it's all of those things. And, um, uh, you know, I think of it, it, it's simply a building. The cloud is a, is a building uh, filled with computers and cross connects and, and network connectivity and everything that it takes to make uh, the world operate today. Um, so there's still a lot of wires and cables um, uh, and things running around, but uh, I would encourage anyone who has an opportunity to take a look inside a modern data center. They're very, very impressive and uh, it does give you a, a different idea um, of what the cloud is. There's a lot of misconceptions. Sanjay, following up from Dave, who shared more about Equinix, Talk to us a little bit about how Adani has established itself in the data center business and what your perspective is on the vision and potential for the India data center marketplace, uh, including but not limited to the sustainability and some of the commercial opportunities that we've discussed earlier. Thanks, Arun. I think it's a great question. Uh, Adani, Adani groups always believes in a philosophy of uh, nation building. We've actually demonstrated this in last 20 years by creating a large ecosystem, which is energy side, logistics side. We are one of the largest port and airport operation uh, operation in India. Energy, uh, we are the we are the uh, 
one of the biggest in terms of renewable size. Generation, transmission, and distribution is something which is another piece related to Adani Group. Adani is always keen to prepare the nation, which is which is basically for the for the next wave of disruption, which will be caused by advancement in a technology. And that is where we need a highly reliable digital infrastructure with a sustainability at the core. At the same time, we have done a partnership with the H Connects, which is a very young company. And they are the one who has got a very, very advanced technology systems. They have grown exponentially in the last 10 years. And they are the largest DC player. And up there have got 35 locations and 50 DCs and 250 megawatt approximately capacity. And they have been successfully delivering very highly uptime, which is 99.9999, which is uptime consistent. Together, we we as a Adani, Adani and Edge Connects, we have taken a our vision is to build thousand megawatt data center capacity in next decade. And this is this is just to empower digital India. Currently, if you look at that, India capacity itself is 400 megawatt. And we are seeing a digital massive wave in India. And people are adopting technology, and we as a we as a nation, we are a very young nation, and uh, this is something which is possible by leveraging Adani Group's capability, which is one of the largest renewable players, as I said, and with a capacity of about 25 gigawatt of capacity is already underbuilt. And not only that, I think data center and the digital ecosystem requires network infrastructure, which is undersea cable, which is important. Currently, we see Mumbai and Chennai are the two places wherein the digital infrastructure is there, which is inter, uh, uh, undersea cable. And the submarine cable has to be unlocked and this has to go in the southern and eastern part of the northern part of the country where we are going to play a key role. And likewise, on a domestic side, we own a lot of ports in India. We are going to create a pontoon of network, which will be riding across, across ports and which will give a new network. Not only that, we have got an additional edge in terms of having a connectivity. A lot of fiber travels along the transmission line, which is called OPGW, which gives a highly redundant network to, to hyperscalers and the enterprises. Clearly, these kind of things are going to make, make a big difference. And data center parks is also one philosophy we are, we are going to get in large cities and followed by edge network in tier two and tier three. So all put together, we are going to create a massive infrastructure, which obviously core of it is sustainability and a lot of application, a lot of ecosystem, which we're going to build and one stop shop for all the all the customer needs, what 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 India needs. Thank you, Sanjay. Those are those are great perspectives. And as we think about the application and the ecosystem environment that you mentioned earlier, I think this is a great place for us to switch gears and, and talk a little bit about the hardware and the partner side. Uh, Raj, um, you know, Sanjay talks about the potential of the data center marketplace. You spent your entire career building technology strategy and innovating intelligent network, network design. Can you talk a little bit about how things like speed, security, latency, have driven your innovation and how you're thinking about new trends in the terms of building intelligent networks from what other folks like Sanjay and Dave and Chris had mentioned earlier. Yeah, so I think that's a great question. Um, uh, thanks, Aaron. I think uh, to build up on what Chris and uh, Dave and uh, Sanjay have said, um, the hardware innovations are at the centerpiece of any growth in data center market. Uh, as India looks at growing the data center market, there's a lot to learn from what we have learned over the last 10, 15 years in terms of data center technology evolution. Like you said, speeds and feeds are increasing constantly to from 100 gig to 400 gig to an next year 800 gig. At Juniper, we have been delivering switch fabrics uh, for those speeds and low latency um, uh, for multiple data centers, data centers at hyperscalers, data centers in India, for example, for the telecom sector, the banking sector, uh, um, LIC, uh, uh, even government installations for a railroad and so on. So I think there, I think we have to keep on uh, advancing the technology envelope, push the boundary of innovation. And that's where India has an opportunity to, to be a part, a larger part of the ecosystem while focusing on making India like initiative. What we believe we bring to the table is that this kind of innovation and growth can be done in collaboration with the Silicon Valley, 
which is the center of innovation here. We run probably the largest data center uh, in India uh, for our own purposes, but as well as our customers use. For, uh, use. So there we have made sure that we invest in security, we invest in really good uh, technological growth with respect to fabric automation. Because if you look at the intelligent network design that you mentioned, the key aspect of that is how do you automate a fabric and data center automation using the closed loop automation. One of the things we have done is the apply machine learning AI technology to provide closed loop automation in which you can do automated root cause diagnostics. You can self remediate any problems you see before some human intervention is necessary. And that is a great area of innovation where India having already invested in software ecosystem. But a lot of the software for the rest of the world is actually built in India today. Bangalore is one of our largest R&D centers. So I see that as we uh, look at India's growth in data centers, there's an opportunity for India to collaborate with companies like us, which come from the US, who have a large presence in uh, uh, Bangalore as well as in India. And joint innovation in this area will allow India to be leader with respect to data center intelligent network design. Oh, that's an excellent perspective, Raj. You know, you mentioned the word collaboration, um, and I can't help but but wonder, you know, as you think about collaboration from an innovation standpoint, but also from a, a sustainability perspective, you know, what what is what is Juniper doing around energy efficiency and green issues um, from your perspective? I think we're, uh, we are doing two things. One is for ourselves, we have set uh, a target to be uh, completely carbon neutral. The secondly, when it comes to product design and product delivery, both in software as well as hardware, we are making sure that products are designed right from the start using sustainability in mind, including, you know, how do we make sure that uh, the hardware we design or custom chips we design are extremely power efficient. So one of the things we do is that to really deliver a value with respect to security, latency, we have our own custom chip based uh, switch fabrics. And for those, we make sure that they're designed to be extremely power efficient. So the power curve over the time has to continue to go down so that we have a lot more power efficient uh, uh, systems. Same thing in software. You can do lots of optimization in software itself so that you use less energy. An example could be that when you have large scale distributed systems designed to operate data center, you don't have to try to optimize every bit of computing to be the fastest because many times it's not necessary. So you can trade that off by slowing down things sometimes, but use less energy. So that's, I call the energy efficient, energy aware computing. And we are also investing in that. That's an excellent perspective. And I think that that really tees up uh, a couple of follow-ons and, and I'm gonna invite Dave and, and Sanjay uh, to talk a little bit about how, you know, how we see differing expectations in data centers from a sustainability and energy conservation perspective. How has that changed and evolved to the way that you design and construct data centers from that sustainability point of view? Uh, Sanjay, I'll start with you and then we'll, we'll, we'll go to Dave. Yeah. So we at Adani Connects look at a sustainability through a ESG framework, which is environment, social and governance part of it. Clearly, carbon emission, water management, waste management, green building, energy management. These are the pillars on the environment side. When we talk about carbon emission, I think we have to be very efficient on a, on a carbon emission side. And uh, the kind of, as I said, the Dani Group has got a big capacity, which is under construction and some of it's already delivered. I think that is going to play a key role by innovating in a data center space. And while we go to a customer hyperscaler, a large enterprise, we are not solving even data center part of it. We are going to them holistically and talking to them. How can I make sure I can I can give you a carbon neutral solution, not in India, across the globe? I think that is going to play a key role. The other key advantage working with Adani Group is there are group captive mechanism, which is a new way of giving a part to them and an efficient way of giving a part to them. I think that is also going to play a key role. The last, the most important on this is the hybrid solution in India is the key. Solar and the and the other part of it, I think storage part of it, 
and the wind part of it that is evolving slowly and slowly we'll see a lot of innovation and a lot of a uh, lot of part uh, coming in in this aspect the second is the social infrastructure social part of it on ESG diversity and inclusion is the most important aspect on this training and development is another core piece which we are working on we are working on a on a philosophy wherein 25 30% of our workforce come from from the colleges and they are being sent globally for a training purpose and these guys are bring, bringing in a lot of expertise from from global operators and obviously from our edge connects and those expertise are getting used in an indian home, in an indian environment i think that is also creating a lot of upgradation the skill upgradation is very important for from an india perspective and that is something that is something that, which we are working on the last the most important is uh, uh, the last the most important is uh, the health and health part of it and where health is something which is uh, health and safety is something our people are uh, people are working on it and there are a lot of lot of lot of things are done on a construction side and lot of lot of things are happening on a, our partner side the last the most important is governance i think governance is going to play a key role which is all of us understand governance is something which is non negotiable business ethics and compliance is, is the one key element which all of us are focusing on and we are seeing how can we collaborate with all the operators and bring in this governance among the ecosystem the complete chain part of it and the data security is something which is another important aspect of the governance there are a lot of flaws lot of lot of challenges all the operators all the customers and hyperscale especially going on all the way helping us we are learning from them all the way in this journey and and improving day on day basis i think environmental social and the governance is, is something which is core core to adani connects on this subject great perspective thank you shan j uh dave i'd be interested to hear your perspective on this as well yeah i i agree with everything sanjay had to say there i'd add um our core mission at Equinix, and I would say in data centers in general, we, we protect, connect, and power the digital economy. Um, we have to do so in a sustainable fashion. Um, and if you think about that statement, protect, protect connect, and power, we, we protect the reason, one of the reasons that companies come to data centers such as ours um, is uh, for high availability, um, again, someone mentioned, you know, five, six, seven, nines of, of uptime. So we have to build reliable data centers. So we, we cannot sacrifice reliability uh, for, for other goals. And, and so um, as we innovate, as we uh, build more efficiently and more sustainable data centers, whether that's in water reduction, energy reduction, more efficient uh, design or layout or densing up uh, to use less footprints so densing up the facility. Um, all of those elements of sustainable design and operation have to keep uh, reliability and the protection of the equipment and the, the data flow um, and access and uptime of the equipment in mind. Um, so again, it's, it's multidimensional and um, we, we have many, many uh, stakeholders uh, that we have to satisfy in that realm. But to your, but to your question about data centers, really, and it, it, it's, it's a collection of mechanical and electrical equipment, essentially, and with, with some network and, and IT equipment thrown in there. But the bulk of our, our energy use and, and water use is all on the electrical and mechanical side. And so, um, be using using the latest technology, being more efficient. Again, the best the best use of energy is not to use it. So first first reduce and conserve, um, and then use it wisely after that. Um, so use the most efficient equipment um, in close proximity to where it's needed. Uh, select the right technologies uh, for the environment. Um, we may use a very different cooling technology in India than we deploy uh, in, uh, you know, the Midwest United States or somewhere like that. Um, so there's, there's slight differences around the world in how we deploy technology, but uh, tailoring those though, to the environment um, 
to have the most efficient, most reliable data center for the location is the ideal. Excellent. Great, great perspectives. Um, you know, and, and we were able to get a really great perspective from, from Raj on, on, on the partner side of things. And, and obviously from Sanjay and Dave, you know, from an operator perspective, you know, we're going to, we're going to switch gears here a little bit and, and go over to Shushant. Um, Shushant, you know, you, you track digital India issues, um, based on what you've evaluated over the last 18 to 24 months, can you share some insights for, for the audience in, in terms of the Indian market and its growth potential? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, if you are in data center space, I would say there is no better place to be than in India. Uh, if I were to start with, let's say the policy and government perspective. Now, government is pushing the digital India program forward with lots of initiatives, which are focused towards a government to citizen programs. Uh, you can think about the entire vaccination program which was run or the uh, citizen se uh, service centers being set up all over the country. The underlying fabric of all this digital infrastructure has to come and sit on a data center. This is getting powered with many other initiatives as well. For example, uh, 100 plus smart cities that the government intends to set up. And not just the citizen program, but the data of which will be more uh, sensing data, let's say on I IoT or geospatial data that will all also come in and would need to be anchored uh, from a data center perspective. Uh, keeping all of this in mind, uh, actually government is looking at a policy to give data centers uh, infrastructure status, uh, which opens up uh, the tap from a long-term capital funding uh, and uh, much more possibilities from business perspective. So. If I was to look at the government and policy side of things, it's very, very positive, and I would say uh, value accretive uh, to the overall uh, data center space. If I then come to what's happening from a business perspective, uh, now in the last roughly 18 to 24 months, we saw the digital transformation initiatives at pretty much all our clients get supercharged or turbocharged, and uh, the investments have become two times, three times what they were before the pandemic. And that is also because of the fact that we have seen a decisive shift in the way businesses operate in India. So many of the businesses which were classical businesses, they shifted to digital. And in terms of the digital first businesses, they got a strong flip as well. Uh, just on a related note, uh, you know, India, uh, you know, had uh, about 20, sorry, 41, uh, uh, startups which reach the unicorn status this year, and we are not done with the year yet, so hopefully it will be much larger. Uh, from the NASCOM perspective, uh, the 10,000 startup program is also running with full steam. So what I'm trying to say is that there's a very thriving digital e-commerce, digital first business ecosystem, which is driving the demand. In addition to that, from a corporate sector as well, there's a lot of demand which is coming through. Some of that is pent up demand over the last 18 to 24 months. But more than that, this is truly transformational demand, which is coming because of the change in the uh, in the business operating model itself. Uh, there is one key element which I just wanted to add from business perspective. See, historically, uh, in India, if you look at the mid-market segment or MSMEs, they either were on-prem model or they were not really consuming technology services in a big way. But what has happened in the last 18 to 24 months is that uh, that historical demand, that latent demand is also now coming and landing on to the digital fabric. So that's another driver of demand that we see as people adopt more digital technologies, even mid-sized organizations become comfortable with exploring AI or ML or data analytics or IoT use cases being built on cloud, on data centers, and so on and so forth. So the net-net outcome is uh, uh, from the data center industry perspective in India, we have roughly 30% plus year-on-year -year growth being projected. From where we are today, we will more than double our data center capacity by 2023. Uh, and uh, it will be almost a four and a half billion dollar industry. So in that sense, uh, the 
there is a strong sort of set of uh, tailwinds which are supporting the data center infrastructure setup, demand, uh, and, and all the enablers around that. Uh, but there are also a few tailwind, sorry, headwinds that I uh, wanted to uh, bring your attention to. The first and foremost is around power reliability. Now, we heard about uh, how we are looking at renewable power. Uh, so if you look at the top four cities of India, where you have roughly 75% of IT workloads being serviced out of there, it's not a big problem. But if you are trying to expand that into the hinterlands of India, there in many pockets, there is still a challenge on power reliability and consistency, which is very essential for an effective data center industry to function. Uh, the second key sort of headwind I wanted to bring forward is around uh, sustainability from a water usage perspective, for example, and other areas. Now, India essentially is a water stress economy. Uh, uh, we, we have a large number of you know, population dependent on certain set of water sources. So per capita water availability is already pretty low. And uh, there is a bit of water stress, stress especially in north uh, eastern part of india as well as some elements uh, in the western parts as well so if you're looking at the classical data center models uh, which uh, have heavy usage of water or power then you have a sustainability question coming in if you're setting it up uh, over there and that needs to be addressed and the last point i wanted to sort of mention before i hand it back to you is around talent right so to have a thriving di digital data center ecosystem in your country, you would also need the right talent ramp up as you, as you are ramping up the uh, the production in, in the data center space and as the demand is ramping up. Now that's where you know we, in a way, are at a better footing because there's a strong technology workforce that is there. But at the same time, the way the technologies are shifting, we believe that there would be a need to ramp that up even at a faster clip, because you're not only servicing India to India demand, you're also servicing the global to India derived demand with the same talent pace. So those were the key things that sort of uh, come to my mind when we talk about the overall lay of the land uh, as far as the data center industry in India is concerned. Thank you, Shushant. Great, great, great perspective there. And I think that gives that gives us a number of jumping off points as, as we continue this conversation. You, know, you talked a lot about digital transformation, um, and, and I definitely want to get back to some of the talent conversation as well. But talk to us a little bit about how you see you know, new technologies, specifically the impact of the blockchain, uh, 5G, uh, cryptocurrencies, how how are those new technologies impacting the technology market for data centers and and, and really data norms in India uh, as 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 India and other markets um, see data penetration increasing? So, uh, Shushan, I you know I'd, I'd pose that question to you, and then I'd love to hear from Chris as well from his perspective. Sure. So, I think uh, whatever I just mentioned about uh, the market in India. Uh, sort of multiply that multifold and that's the opportunity in front of us uh, when we look at uh, the emerging technologies on 5G or crypto, blockchain, IoT. Uh, the reason for that is, uh, you know, we have a fairly large and thriving ecosystem uh, in terms of the economy. And as that economy is adopting all these leading technologies, uh, we are going to create enormous amount of data and there will be a need to you know, capture, analyze, store, manage, execute decisions based on all of that data set that is going to get created out of that. So uh, we heard uh, some of our leading uh, industry players in India talking about 1 billion devices to be connected by a certain time period. Uh, similarly, the government of India has uh, uh, decided to invest heavily in this space and, and they are running their own accelerator program on IoT, for example. There are already 1,500 plus startups working on uh, use cases on a platform basis on IoT. On 5G side, uh, the policy uh, is, uh, is very, I would say, positive. Uh, there are 5G trials which are going on in India 
And especially if you talk about manufacturing, healthcare, logistics uh, kind of spaces, there we are looking at opportunities just blooming through as uh, these technologies become much more sharper in their propositions. So all said and done, my view is that uh, whatever growth rate we are witnessing today, uh, that's just the baseline. And if we actually get the value out of all these developments that we are seeing on the horizon, the clip rate for India is going to be even higher. And uh, if I was to sort of contrast that against, you know, what's happening in India versus the wider APAC region. So see the in APAC region, broadly the data center market is hovering around, let's say 13, 14% growth year on year, depending on whom you ask. Uh, and uh, the established centers, of course, let's say Hong Kong, uh, Singapore, and emerging areas, let's say Indonesia are also doing pretty well. But if you look at the sheer uh, quantum of growth happening in India, I do believe that in the future, India would be one of the very important markets in data center space in the entire APAC region. And it is not just going to serve India as an Indian economy, it will also act as one of the regional centers and destinations for data center businesses to service rest of the APAC market as well. So great perspective, Sushant. Uh, as we look at the landscape over the next five years, what can businesses, investors, and, and end users expect when it comes to access to data and localization of where that data is held from a privacy, uh, security, and innovation perspective? And you know, what are some models that we're seeing with respect to hyperscaling and, and localizing from a technical perspective? And Raj, I'd, I'd love to hear your perspectives on this. A great question, thanks. I think uh, hyperscalers are already expanding uh, the concept of local zones and local edges to geographical regions to be closer to consumers, closer to enterprises that consume the data. I think that trend is going to accelerate for India mm -hmm. because India has a, is a huge market. Uh, data center growth there is increasing, but most importantly, I think, uh, as Sushant mentioned, there's a big growth in use of digitization and uh, also uh, access to data. And that requires you to localize the data, uh, localize the privacy controls, and give access locally for latency purposes also. So what I see evolving marketplace in India, and which could be a big, good model for the rest of the world, is that create more local zones, local edge zones, local edge data centers. And these can be large and small data centers, depending on the location of the company, where you have the access to the local data made easily available with localization. I think that's an opportunity India uh, offers to the rest of the world, as well as the companies and businesses like Juniper, where we would participate in providing uh, underlying hardware and systems infrastructure for those kind of data centers, which could be local edge, mini edge, edge, and local data centers, including local zones, uh, so that even if you're using hyperscalers or not, you're using local data centers, you get a similar uniform experience with respect to access to data, access to privacy, and so on. Excellent. Raj, thank you so much. Um, Raj, let's go with your closing statement here. Sure. Let me know when to start. Just start anytime and just take a pause. Peter, let's do a let's do a close up on Raj for his closing statement. First of all, I want to thank you for inviting me to the panel, and it was really a pleasure to listen to the, both the perspectives and advice from the experts on this panel. Uh, to close, I would summarize uh, the opportunity in India uh, uh, on multiple fronts. Number one data center innovation with respect to software hardware system innovation can happen in india in collaboration with the companies like juniper network which are based in silicon valley and bring lots of innovation already to india number two i think people talked about sustainability 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 is an opportunity also for innovation where we can do sustainable uh, designs of hardware software and systems and more importantly try to be a model for 
uh, renewable, sustainable infrastructure. Third one is the growth of digitalization in India and access to data is going to create another opportunity to make sure that the data centers in India provide local access to data with local privacy and data access controls. There again, we believe that we have expertise and experience in working with hyperscalers as well as other customers, including telco operators that Juniper can bring to the table to help India be successful in this journey. Thank you. Thank you, Raj. Excellent. Okay, we're gonna have we're gonna go to one more question before we get to closing closing statements here. Chris, uh, I'm gonna come back to you. Raj's comments paint a picture of you know localization and access to data. And you know if we've learned anything about the pandemic, it's it's really been an accelerant for digitalization. And I'm curious about you know your perspective on the conjecture on data centers and their growing position as utilities. And, and what you think are the responsibilities that come with that. Sure, thanks, Aaron. Yeah, yeah that it's, it's absolutely true that the movement of data is a, a critical part of, of the fabric of every economy these days. And obviously data centers play a, a crucial role as we've been discussing, you know, I, I, sometimes it, it's, it's codified that there's a trade-off between um, reliability, efficiency, and accessibility. And, and I, I don't think that's the case. A lot of the, the data services um, that exist on the market today uh, do a lot of those things. Uh, you know, the cloud the cloud market is, is a good example of that, um, providing flexibility, convenient access, and, and reliable computing resources for, for many people and organizations that, that weren't able to access those uh, in the past and, and at increasingly lower cost. Uh, that is, I think, being uh, enabled by many um, countries. Uh, Singapore, I, I mentioned, has a, has a regime that, that encourages uh, cross-border for data between jurisdictions. So um, that is in and of itself a, a, an important aspect of it, um, as, as is uh, the, the, the technical infrastructure um, that companies are pursuing in their pursuit of, of, of greater efficiencies. Um, you know, you, you take the workloads that we're seeing um, on some of these, on these data centers and, uh, and compare those to, let's say, um, in the cloud versus on-premise. Uh, I know that there's uh, one study by Amazon that, that showed that computing workloads moving them from on-premise data centers to the cloud can really improve the energy efficiency for those. Uh, in APAC and reduce their carbon footprint by more than 78%. So there's there's a, a lot of movement, I think, to, to try to improve things, both on behalf of the private sector, uh, on behalf of governments, and, and a lot of stakeholders moving to, to try to ensure that uh, data can move and will move in a way that is reliable, is uh, accessible, and is also sustainable in the long run. That's great, Chris. Uh, Shushant, I'd be interested in your perspectives on this issue. Sorry, can you repeat the question? Sorry. No I worries. I was just looking at the, the document and I think I lost the flow. Oh, no worries. No worries. Shushant, you know, Chris gave us a really great explanation around um, data centers um, operating more in the position of utilities and the responsibility that comes with that. Do you have a perspective on that from, from an India point of view? Absolutely. Uh, see, globally, we are talking about uh, digital adding more than a trillion dollars of economic value. Right? And I would say in India, it's no different. We believe that there is substantial value to be added by digitization of existing economy as well as the new opportunities it will open up. What it means for data centers is that data centers need to be seen as a core enabler, pretty much like an underlying fabric, which allows for this digitization to happen and that value to be created. I believe that the government's policy of giving data centers infrastructure status as well as associated incentives is the step in the right direction 
and also signals the intent of treating it like one. Uh, what we need to do from a data center industry perspective is to shift gears and look at ourselves as key enabler for the larger transformation which is happening around us. And consequently, from uh, the operating structure, uh, from the business value sharing with the customer versus the data center, in terms of the public role uh, that uh, the data center operator plays, pretty much like a data fiduciary in some sense, right? In terms of access, in terms of holding itself to standards of sustainability and sort of common goal, we will have to operate by all those yardsticks that we have seen run very successfully in other parts of the economy, which are essentially the enablers for the larger economy, and we'll have to operate it the same way. So, so I would say those are the themes that I wanted to add beyond what Chris has already mentioned. Thank you, Shushant. Thank you, Chris. Great, great perspectives there. As we close out the session today, uh, we want to give each of our panelists time for some closing remarks um, so, to make sure that you're able to, to share a little bit more perspective or a point that you maybe want to wrap up on. So, Dave, we'll, we'll start with you as we close out here. Sure, thanks. Um, just to reinforce something that, that Chris mentioned there about data centers, uh, I've been in the industry a long time and I can, I can seen a lot of changes in, in technology and, and everything. And, and one of the hardest questions to answer has always been, um, are we more efficient? And more efficient, so is one large data center more efficient than many, many small ones? And I can tell you across my career, um, you know, coming from banks essentially and with, with many, many, many small server rooms and computer data centers spread out all over the place, large data centers have the opportunity um, to uh, operate, uh, again, in a very reliable uh, fashion, uh, interconnected um, for fallback purposes and everything across the world with follow the sun and virtualization and cloud, all of those things, and also in a very sustainable way. We have an ability um, to really drive uh, those, those functions and, and uh, sustainability, especially into the locations where we are. And so I think we, as data centers, as an industry, need to work harder to, to change uh, the way we're viewed. And, and we can be good neighbors and, and actually uh, operate more efficiently uh, than, than others can independently. Um, I also think it's an extremely exciting time for data centers, and especially with Equinix going into a location like India, where for us it's a it's a whole new whole new environment where we can bring our best and latest technology and and builds uh, to the location, and again really uh, help help drive the marketplace. And I, I think about vertical integration, everything from manufacturing and equipment, um, whether it's on the IT side to the mechanical electrical side. Um, there's so many opportunities. And so uh, it's a very, very exciting time uh, to be in the industry. Thank you, Dave. And we've appreciated your perspectives throughout the hour today. Chris, I'm gonna turn it over to you for final comments. Sure. I'll be brief, Aaron. I think it's been a, a really enlightening discussion and I wanna thank you and my fellow panelists for having me on. Just quickly, I. I think it's clear that governments can play an outsized role in enabling or constricting the growth of the, the data center industry. I, I think the what we're seeing here in Singapore is a, an example of uh, where the government has tightened and, and that has had a, a demonstrative impact on data centers. They've attempted to try to create bridges to other places like Batam in Indonesia across the strait, um, but it, it is certainly uh, thrown uh, a bright light in the face of a lot of industry actors who are concerned that they won't have space to, to run uh, a lot of their digital services out of Singapore. So um, that's a concern and it's, it's definitely something I think India uh, should be contemplative of when it uh, considers its own policy. I, I think we've also uh, realized that uh, the, the growth of data centers has impacts and ripple effects well beyond their, their immediate um, 
impact on in, in on on the market for the centers themselves, but across multiple sectors: the financial services industry, transportation, even the energy industry itself. I think uses a, a lot of data to, to to manage its own services. So. Uh, I, I think that the, the breadth of the issue is, is clear. And and lastly, I, I think we all realize that it's incumbent on all the different actors to consider the, the really complex suite of issues really carefully and uh, to consider the, the commitments and requirements that they either impose or or, or, uh, or they seek to make and, and, and really try to do that in ways that meet the requirements of today's rapidly evolving world. Thank you, Chris. Great insights on on public private uh, uh, implications across all of this. Really appreciate your time. Sanjay, your final thoughts. Thank you uh, to have me on this panel. Really uh, very exciting discussion. A lot of insights uh, from all the panelists. Uh, so from our perspective, I think robust infrastructure, which is going to play a key role, which will support not only the future needs of our evolving IT industry, but this is actually also going to fill the vision of a self-reliant trillion dollar digital economy by 2025, which is, which is key to India. And I also see clearly India is becoming a global for global data center hub because of a lot of uh, geopolitical environment is, is getting very, very stable. And people see a lot of investment going on a, on a sustainability side. People see a lot of data center parks are coming up. And 5G is going to fuel this uh, further growth wherein people will see that large nation is implementing tier two, tier three towns and a lot of application going to customer, closer to customer, which is going to be next digital wave of uh, for India. And uh, I agree with Sushant clearly, this, this nation has, has actually seen multifold growth in data center and the data generation itself is going multifold. So very exciting time in coming years. And I'm sure all of us will appreciate India's effort, people effort, government efforts towards making this dream come true for India from a digital nation point of view. Thank you, Sanjay, and congrats on Adani's success. Shushant, your final remarks? Uh, thank you so much, Aaron, for having me on this panel. It's not every day that you uh, are sharing stage with all players in the ecosystem, from data center operators to technology service providers to advisors and people also who look at uh, the policy and government initiatives. So you were able to cover good ground on the panel today. And there are many takeaways uh, that you know I personally am taking from, from this discussion. In the overall uh, theme around data centers for India, as I mentioned before, we believe it's a fairly large opportunity uh, if we play our cards right as a collective uh, ecosystem, I'm sure we, we can have much more uh, impact, not only from an economic standpoint, but even to the lives of the common citizen of India. Thank you. Well said, Shushant, and it was great to have you on the panel today. Well, that concludes our panel. Uh, on behalf of the U.S. India Business Council, our collection of amazing panelists, We Communications, uh, we thank you for listening and watching. We hope you found the discussion insightful. We did indeed cover an awful lot of ground today. Special thank you to Raj, Chris, Dave, Shushant, and Sanjay for participating in today's panel. And thank you everyone and enjoy the rest of the West Coast Digital Summit. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jay Gullish, and what a great first day of the USIBC West Coast Digital Summit. When we started in the morning, we talked about our three objectives. We wanted to connect uh, people and businesses between the West Coast of the United States and India, definitely check. We wanted to give an opportunity to our members and other experts to talk about new technology. Today, we talked about data centers, we talked about rural entrepreneurship, and we also wanted to set the agenda going forward um, in the U.S.-India relationship. And so stay tuned for tomorrow. We have another couple of topics, a couple of days of really good conversations. 
Uh, tomorrow specifically, we're talking about auto technology and the changing dynamics of digital finance. We'll, we'll talk about digital payments, cryptocurrencies, blockchains, and more. On Wednesday, we have several partners lined up with Catan and Company. We're going to be discussing a series of legal and regulatory issues. And then finally, on Thursday, we toggle to a USIBC member only discussion. We have some briefings on India's privacy bill, the open network for e commerce, and we're starting our conversation to strategize for 2022. With that, I want to thank our participants and hope you will join us tomorrow in the days to come. Thank you. Good morning and good night.